Well, g'day Curd Nerds. This video is a special compilation of my very, very popular cheddar cheese making video. This is a the traditional cloth banded wrapped cheese. Now what I've done is I've put together not only the original video on how to make the traditional cloth banded cheddar that has had over 3.2 million video views but I've added on all of the updates, there's three update videos, and there's two taste test videos. Also, watch to the end because I put in a lessons learnt video, uh, which I think will help out a lot of people. Anyway, let's get on and see how I made traditional cloth banded cheddar. <laughs> G'day curd nerds. Today we're going to be making cloth banded cheddar and a, tradi a traditional English cheese from the Somerset area, I believe. Now, we're going to be following tradition by cloth banding the cheddar. We're not going to be waxing it, uh, which actually increases the flavour of the cheese. So we're going to smother on the outside of the cheese some cheesecloth and we're going to put that, uh, we're going to put that all over the cheese and then we're going to smother it in Coconut oil. Traditionally it's lard, but I don't have any lard handy, but I have found that uh, coconut oil is a good substitute. Anyway, on with the cheese. And the ingredients are 10 litres of full cream milk, an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture, 2.5 mil or half a teaspoon of calcium chloride, 2.5 mil or half a teaspoon of liquid rennet, 12 drops of annatto, and one and a half tablespoons of cheese salt, some cheesecloth, make sure it's an old one but a clean one, and some lard or coconut oil for banding. So we're going to heat our milk up now. I'm using a double boiler and we're going to bring it up to the target temperature. And the target temperature for this cheese is 31 degrees Celsius or 88 Fahrenheit. Now once at our target temperature we're going to add our mesophilic culture and we're going to sprinkle that all over the top and we're going to let that rehydrate for a little bit and then we're going to stir it in gently. Now we're going to put the lid on and we're going to allow the milk to acidify or ripen for 40 minutes. So 40 minutes later, I'm going to start adding all of the other ingredients. So make sure you add these while you're stirring. So firstly the annatto, and this gives the cheese a creamier looking consistency or colour. So give that a good stir through. Add in the calcium chloride. And keep stirring and then we're going to add in the rennet which is coming up soon. Notice that I'm not whipping the milk into a frenzy. We're just uh, stirring that gently so we're not aerating the milk. So here's the rennet, we're just going to pour that in now while we're stirring. And just stir for no longer than one minute. And before you pop the lid on, make sure the milk has stopped moving. So what we're going to do is check for a clean break after 40 minutes now. In this first instance, it was a bit of a sloppy break. It wasn't as neat as I thought it could be. So I left that for another 10 minutes. And then I checked it off camera and it was fine after the, uh, the full 50 minutes. So cut the curd into 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes. 
just using my trusty curd cutter there and then finishing off the vertical cuts with a knife and one way and then the other there we go now we're going to let the curds heal for five minutes So five minutes later, just start stirring. Now we're going to put the heat back on, but we're going to slowly increase the temperature to 39 degrees Celsius over the period of 40 minutes. So here it is 40 minutes later. You can see the curds about baked bean size. See the annatto starting to kick in there. You can see everything's going quite yellow. So we're going to start the cheddaring process now. Firstly, we allow the curds to settle to the bottom for 40 minutes. And then once the 40 minutes has elapsed, we're just going to gently drain off the whey. Now you could keep this for a whey ricotta, but I've already got one on the fridge. There's only so much ricotta you can eat. There you go, it comes out in one big slab. Now that's what you're aiming for. Now, we're gonna pop that, drain that just gently a little bit, and then we're gonna pop that back into the pot because we need to keep the curds warm whilst we're cheddaring. So we're going to cut the curd while it's in the pot. Just going to cut the curd mass in half, which gives you an approximate uh, same sort of curd size as they do in the traditional uh, cheddar making process. So we're going to flip over each half for uh, just quickly there, if I can stop the pot from moving. There we go. So just flip it over and then let it rest for 10 minutes. Now I'm going to transfer this back uh, to the double boiler just to make sure that we can maintain that target temperature of 39 Celsius, 102 Fahrenheit. Now it does seep out a fair bit away, but that's no big deal. Just make sure it's covered so no dust or fluff gets in there. And we're going to do that for 10 minutes. So 10 minutes has elapsed. You can see a fair bit of ways come out. Okay, so just tip over, uh, sorry, turn over each slab. And you can see that the curds are shrinking all the time during this process. So pop the lid back on and wait for another 10 minutes. So 10 minutes has elapsed again. So just turn over each half again. Pretty easy this cheddaring, isn't it? There we go, pop the lid back on. Then one more time. So this final um, cheddaring turn is for 15 minutes this time. So let's flip it over. There we go. Pop the lid back on. So that's 45 minutes cheddaring time in total. So you can see uh, that's how much whey is collected on the bottom of the pot. Now we're just going to drain that whey out now. Just going to plonk the slabs into the uh, cheese li cheesecloth lined colander and then whatever other bits are sitting in the bottom. It's not much. It's all good. Right, so I'm just going to transfer that to a chopping board because we need to cut it down into small fingers of curd so about oh, half an inch which is 1.25 centimeters and then cut that in half normally in the uh, cheddar factory the, this big machine it's like a shredder 
that does all this for you. But somewhere at home we have to improvise. So I'll just cut it into cubes now. Okay, we're going to mill this now. So we're just going to break this each cube in half. As you can see there I've started and I'll show you the finishing off of the process. For those wondering, that is a LED light that's in the way. I couldn't look through the little viewer. But you can see the process. We're just cutting each of those in half. So we've got chunks of curd. So we're going to add in our one and a half tablespoons of salt and then we're just going to mill that through. We just transfer that into our cheesecloth lined cheese basket. I'm using a uh, 165 millimeter basket there, which takes up to 10 litres of milk. Well, the curd's made from 10 litres of milk, no problems at all. So just uh, fold the cloth over and pop the follower on top. And then we're going to screw that down to the, the pressure for the initial pressing. Now if you haven't got a cheese press like this one, just apply the right amount of weight onto your uh, follower. So we're going to do it at 11 kilos or 24 pounds for one hour. This is just to form the, the cheese initially. You'll see it will have quite a few gaps um, in the cheese. Okay, just make sure it can drain freely. You see a fair bit of waste coming off still. Well, creamy at first but then it goes clear okay so an hour has elapsed and we're going to take it out and turn it over just be gentle because it may not have formed properly still there are a little bit of holes but uh, now we're going to tighten it all up so we're going to press really heavily at 22 kilos or 50 pounds for 12 hours just make sure you keep the pressure on. If you've got a spring tight like this one, you're going to have to re-tighten the spring um, probably about every six hours. So really heavy pressure for cheddar uh, to make sure that all of those cubes of curd knit together closely. So here I am in my work clothes the next morning, <laughs> taking the cheese out of the press. So it's formed very well. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you can see that there's no mechanical holes or anything like that. It's all smooth all the way around. And yeah, we'll just get a cheese board and mat. Pop that on there. Now we don't need to brine it. It's already got the salt in it, remembering from the milling stage. Now we're going to air dry that for two to three days. Uh, there it is after one day, and there it is after two days. It starts to yellow up. Now we're going to cloth band this now. We're not going to wax the cheese. We're going to use the traditional method. So cut two squares and then one rectangle, which is going to be your circumference. There we go. Don't mind the hair cut. Okay, so that wraps around the circumference. Okay, trim that all off. Lovely. So we coat it with either lard or coconut oil so I'm using coconut oil here and you just uh, give it an initial coating so that the cheesecloth can stick to it so and you smooth that down as well just by dabbing your hand in the bowl there and just wiping it all over the cloth pretty easy to do really so you trim any excess you just need it neat on top and bottom as well so just to make sure you got that all there so 
So that's all done now. I put the top and bottom layer on, just trimming that off, smoothing it down with the, the coconut oil, the liquid coconut oil. So lovely and smooth, um, so nothing can get in. So we're going to mature that at 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit for three months minimum uh, or longer for a sharper cheddar. I'm going to mature mine for six months. So make sure you turn it weekly when it's in the cheese cave. So that's what it looks like before we pop it in the cheese cave. We're going to have a taste test, obviously, in about six months' time, if you can hang around. So this is the one-month update. And I noticed that the cheese was starting to dry out in the normal fridge, so I put it into a maturation container. Um, to keep the humidity there but you can see it's getting a nice bloom of all sorts of different coloured moulds there mainly blue but it's actually not um, on the surface of the cheese itself it's actually on the surface of the rind so as you can see I'm rubbing there and that'll probably rub some of the mould spores all over the cheese but it's smoothing it out so there's no I suppose hot spots but uh, yeah it's still quite moist underneath um, it's not drying out it's not cracking so, so far so good, it's doing well. Uh, only another five months to go um, and I'll crack this cheese open. But it looks quite good, so I'm gonna pop it back in the maturation box and uh, that's how I'll ripen it now from, uh, from here on in. And the way I'm getting air to it, the, it's got a little pop top on the top, so I'm leaving that open um, so it gets a decent airflow. Now here it is at two months. It's looking pretty gnarly, but uh, not gnarly enough to eat. We've only got four months to go. So as you can see there, we're starting, the blue mould has turned black and we've got some white mould growing on there and some brown mould as well. Um, it does smell very earthy. That is uh, all dry, it's not moist at all. Um, but underneath the, uh, the cloth and the coconut oil, it is still very, very firm and solid. So I think it is well protected. So this is what it looks like when I do a 360 view. This is my cheap imitation version of 360. As you can see there, spinning it around. I did expect a little bit more mold to be on the top and bottom surfaces. Uh, it seems to be growing quite uh, vigorously on the, on the side. G'day curd nerds. Today we're gonna to check out the, the cheddar cheese, the cloth banded cheddar cheese I made at the three month mark. Now, I've had a quick inspection myself, uh, but let me show you what it looks like right now. It's a bit of a surprise. So as you can see there, it has quite a lot of mold on it. Uh, it has grown a fair bit in the month since you last saw it. So just to point out some features that I've discovered of this uh, cloth banded cheddar cheese. So it has a lot of black and blue mold on it. But unfortunately, I've gone around and uh, touched it all over and that part there is particularly squidgy. The rest is okay, it's just that little bit there. So I decided to crack open the cheese. So here I am just cutting with a uh, very sharp knife through the cloth. And I just want to make sure that I can save this cheese. I don't want, if it's got infected somehow, um, I don't want it spreading in the next three months, so it would be unedible. Anyway, so I cut through the, uh, the infect a bit. There it is there, so it's very soft. The rest is firm as anything, as firm as normal cheddar would be if I had, say, waxed it. So I'm just gonna show you how I took the cloth off. So I just used the knife when I needed to. As you can see, the, the cheese is fairly clean except for the rind there. I just scraped off some of the blue mold and uh, just to clean it up a little bit and cut off the bit that was squidgy. So just a quick wash of the hands in between so I could tackle the next part. And wash the knife. <laughs> anyway, there we go. We're cutting off the, uh, the cheesecloth there. Now it feels pretty thick. I think I did a pretty good job with the, um, the coconut oil all over the cloth. Pretty easy to scrape off any of this blue mold and there we're gonna cut off the other squidgy bit. Uh, the rest looks okay. Anyway, back to Gav. Well, that was certainly a surprise. A uh, fair bit of the red mold got in as you saw um, and started to make the edge of the cheese a little bit squishy. So what does it ultimately taste like? Well, let's have a look, shall we? So first I'm gonna try 
a little bit of the stuff that started to go pasty. So it certainly isn't red, but it is starting to get very smooth. Mmm, got that sharp, cheddary overtone, that's good. But because there was a little bit of blue mold on the outside as well, a little bit of blue, so not fully cheddary. Anyway, so let's try some of the inside where it wasn't infected. Oh, that slices really well. That's no, good. Even at three months, it's still fairly crumbly, which is good. Mm. That's got, yes, a very nice cheddary flavour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two packets, mm. oh, sorry, these two halves of cheese, I'm going to vacuum pack them now, and I'm going to let them mature for the next six months. It's not sharp enough for a cheddar that I like, but let's get it all away from that, all that mould. I've wiped it down now with salty brine, and hopefully that will stop any further infection. And we should have a pretty good cheese at the six month mark. Anyway, we'll see you in three months time. Well, g'day curd nerds. This is the cheese taste test that you've all been waiting for. This one is for my cheddar cheese that I made back in Ooh, first week of July 2016 so there is half of it there so this is the one that I've um, put down as we're going to taste on the 26th of January 2017 uh, it's a little bit after that but that's no big deal uh, and the other half I've got put away vacuum pack very similar to this one and uh, that's still in the cheese fridge for another three months after this I'm going to try it at the nine month mark anyway let's have a look at the cheese so as I mentioned, it's in its uh, bag, so we'll just crack that open. Now, it smells very cheesy. There's no foul odour coming from the cheese. Let me just uh, get that out. Now, there is a bit of moisture. So I'll just get rid of that first. Definitely smells very cheesy. So I'll just pat that dry. What that is, is just a extra whey that expelled a little bit. Now if I had a wax that it would have been trapped under the wax. So there we go, so that's all lovely. Now you'll notice um, this area here, this is where the mould started to come in underneath the cloth banding um, that you saw in the, uh, the making of video. So that area there, um, I didn't cut it off or anything, it uh, seemed to kill the mould, the vacuum pack. That is a little bit less firm than this part. So let's just cut it into quarters, first of all. It cuts well, that's for sure. And you can see there, very crumbly style, just like a normal cheddar should be, um, especially for this age of uh, six months. So we'll cut off a slice. So this will be classified as a tasty cheddar. You can see very crumbly there. So let's have a little taste, shall we? I love this crumbly texture, it's exactly how a cheddar should be. That's been aged well. Mm. That has a very good cheddar flavour. Really do like it. Mm. That is very nice, that's part, that part of it anyway. Mm. I could eat that all day. Now, what I would do next time is I probably would put a little bit more salt in it. Probably another half a tablespoon for this size cheese. So I'd probably put two tablespoons of salt uh, and mill that through um, during the milling stage. And I'll definitely wax it 
um, in the first instance. I wouldn't cloth band it any uh, again. Um, I found that was just too fiddly, um, too much mucking around. So let's have a look at this other part of the cheese. So it's got a lot of, um, it's actually got bubbles. It's actually got development in the, um, eye development in the cheese. So let's just have a quick taste of that. Mmm. It's a lot sharper um, in that bit. It's actually more like a blue cheese. I can actually taste blue, blue vein flavour, even though clearly there's no blue vein in that area. So I think to serve this up, um, I will uh, backpack this half, this quarter again, cut all of that off because I don't want that flavour going through the cheese and keep that for later on. But this part of the cheese, definitely no problems at all. I'll, uh, we'll continue to eat that um, at our pleasure. It's a very good tasting cheddar. Um, I'm hoping that the, uh, the other half, which didn't have any uh, mould infection through the cloth, uh, will taste even more fantastic at the nine month mark. If you want to know how to make this cheddar cheese, then you can click through at the end card um, at the end of the video. Uh, don't forget that you can also support these cheese making videos and the cheese making efforts that I do if you support me on Patreon, that'll also be in the end card. Anyway, thanks for waiting for the six months for this cheddar taste test, and we'll see you next time. Six months later. Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're going to be tasting the very mature or vintage cheddar cheese. Well, as you can see here in front of me, I've got my uh, cheddar cheese that I made back in uh, early July um, in uh, 2016. So this is uh, officially one year old, so it's its first birthday. Uh, so we're going to try what a vintage cheddar tastes like. Now, if you remember back to the, I think I said it was the final cheddar video. It's not really, nothing's ever final on this channel. The, uh, I actually vacuum packed the cheese. Um, and I did that because I wanted to prevent any further mold growth and seal in any um, of the whey that may have weeped out or anything like that. Now, there was hardly any whey around the cheese when I pulled it out of its wrapper. Um, but the good thing is it's uh, intact. Um, and there is little mold growth. There are some fine crystals though uh, around the cheese, uh, which I believe is calcium and um, oh, lactose, solidified lactose, which is a good thing. So anyway, so let's have a try of the cheese and see how it cuts and see how it crumbles. I apologize for the lack of table here. We'll have to do everything on my lap today. I'm just going to cut a bit off, find a, a good place to start. That is quite crumbly. In fact, it's very crumbly. I suppose as a good vintage cheddar should be. Um, there's certainly no issue with that. So it smells, well, it doesn't smell. There's no off smells or anything like that. So that's a good thing. Uh, so, so far, so good. Well, here goes, all in, we'll see what happens. Mmm. Excuse the munching sounds. That is sharp. It's like I've, oh, sorry. Like I've tasted other cheddars before, uh, aged cheddars. In fact, at this one year mark, I would say this is on par with the two year old cheddar that I had uh, about a year ago. Um, and I wasn't into video, videoing store bought cheddar or, or cheese back then. But this at, at 12 months old or one year old is a fantastic cheese. Now I'm actually glad I took it out of the cloth banding uh, at the, I think it was the three month stage because it was just getting infected around the, the rind here. So 
Uh, the good thing about this is there's no infection. The rind, well, there's hardly any rind because it was vac packed, uh, is intact. The cheese certainly dried out. There was no liquid underneath. So absolutely fantastic at the 12 month mark. In fact, it's so good that uh, I'm gonna have to have another piece. It's always good to taste the fruit of one's labor. Yeah, super crumbly. Mm. It has a, uh, a deep a richness to it. You taste the salt, not so much, very subtle, but certainly the flavors have just shone through. That cheddaring process is amazing um, when you make the cheese that turning and turning to get this this texture after 12 months. But um, yeah, well worth making and keeping a little bit of the uh, of the cheddar uh, and age it to 12 months because the flavour now compared to what it was at the six month mark, uh, there's no comparison. This is certainly deeper, richer, uh, and it is a much better flavoured cheese uh, than it, what it was at the six month mark. So if you can wait the 12 months to age your cheddars, highly recommend it. Mm. That's just, excuse me, gone past my expectations. I, I, I really didn't have too much hope for this cheese to, to improve in flavour because I probably put about half a tablespoon too little salt into it, but mark my words, those those good old uh, mesophilic culture bacteria have done they work, done their work and and made a very very impressive cheese. Anyway, um, I'm a bit uh, a bit hesitant to actually take any to uh, to work and share it with my colleagues because this is so so good. Now I don't know about the meltability. Uh, it is quite high in fat content. Uh, well, probably, yeah, it, it still would be. Look, I dare say it probably would melt. And as you can see, it does melt extremely well. Here's a toasted sandwich that my lovely wife Kim made me that has Branston pickles and the vintage cheddar cheese. It is absolutely delicious. For those cheese connoisseurs out there who follow the channel and know what I'm talking about, this cheese is just to die for. I think this is probably the, one of the best cheeses I've made in a very long time and patience and aging are well worth it. Much, much, much later. So it's been quite a while since I made all of those cheddar cheese videos and what have I learnt? Well, I learnt that I should have probably put two tablespoons of salt into the cheese and that would have prevented a lot of the mould growth um, on the inside of the cloth. So that's where the trouble started with that cheese. Also, instead of using coconut oil, I would have used either lard, which is pig fat that you can buy in the supermarket, or I would have used butter. Uh, ghee is probably better clarified butter uh, because it doesn't have the milk solids in it so I probably would have melted that and cloth banded it instead now since then I've made many many other cheddars and typically these days I simply vacuum pack them in plastic and they turn out equally as well and are very very nice um, however if I had to do the traditional cloth banding again like I said, I'd use either clarified butter or I would use lard. So they're the simple tips. Um, so not much more else to say about that, but I hope you enjoyed this composite video of the making, all the updates and the two taste tests. Well, thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.